All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about absolute value equations. And I have have probably some other stuff on the channel that uh, teaches it in a little bit of a different way. And I just skipped a step without thinking about it. So I thought I'd go back and talk about, uh, you know, the real reason why it looks the way that it does and that sort of thing, or why you would do the little uh, setup tricks that I would use before. Anyway, um, the deal with absolute value is generally it's represented by straight up and down lines, which you're going to have to lie to yourself and pretend these are straight up and down. Um, just kid yourself. So if I have absolute value of 9, it, it really, absolute value speaks to the idea of distance regardless of direction. So say I just arbitrarily decide that going to the right is positive. So if I'm on a number line, I may positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, all from 0, which is right here. On the opposite side of that, I may say that going to the left, because it's the opposite direction, is negative. But absolute value deals with the idea of, uh, it doesn't matter if you go east or west, it just matters how far you go. So if I wanted to say, okay, what's the absolute, I'm going to change that number, otherwise this explanation doesn't fly nearly as well. If I want to change the absolute value of 3, if I start at 0 and go up 1, 2, 3, and once again you're going to have to kid yourself and pretend like these are the equidistant and they're not, uh, 1, 2, 3. I went 3 both ways, but it doesn't matter which way that I went. So I'll say the absolute value of 3, if I can get it to change color back to the color I originally had, there we go, is equal to 3. On the flip side of that, the absolute value of negative 3 also equals to 3. Cars tend to think in absolute value terms, uh, you know, assuming they can think. Um, a GPS will tell you what direction they're going in and whether they're north or south, but the car only measures its uh, measures itself with, mechanically speaking, with an odometer, which is the thing that tells you how many miles you've driven. So we're going to adjust for that just a little bit. So what you get visually from this point is that it could be 3 or negative 3 inside the absolute value, and then you just, you'll get the same end point in, in that case. But you'll have to do a little bit of adjusting when we get to solving equations. So let's get to that. Then there's a purpose to it. So here I have the absolute value of v is equal to 4. Now, in order to adjust for the fact that this could be the positive version of this or the negative, I'm going to make two equations. The first one is just v is equal to 4. Similarly, I may go over here and say, okay, well, negative v is equal to 4. This one I'm going to have to do a little, this one's done, solved. This one, not so much. So this is negative 1v. So in order to get rid of times negative 1, I need to divide v is equal to negative 4. So you should get two answers, is the long and the short of that idea. Um, from there, it gets a little bit more advanced, one would hope, otherwise what would be the point of going into this one's conversation about it? So x, the absolute value of x minus 8 equals 7. So from that, I'll take away that, okay, so I have x minus 8 equals 7. And then I need to the negative version of this whole term. So I'm going to say negative x minus 8 is equal to 7. Because if you remember the original setup, negative 3 and 3 were both equal to 3. So I'm going to say, well, this is kind of working how I want it to work. Uh, this one is a simple solution. You just say, what do I need to do to get rid of minus 8? Well, plus 8. It's the opposite operation. 15. So that's one of my answers. On the flip side of it, there's two ways that you could solve this type of problem. Now, if you want to, this is negative 1 because, you know, a negative something, there's negative 1 of these groups. So I'd say this is negative 1. You could distribute out, if you like, so negative 1x plus 8 equals 7. And go with uh, what's the furthest thing away from x on the same side of the equation? Well, it would be the plus 8, so I'm going to subtract 8 to get rid of it because that's the opposite operation negative 1 over here, negative 1 over here, and then what do I need to do to get rid of times negative 1? I'm going to divide, and I end up with a final answer of x is equal to 1. So that's a reasonable way I could go about doing it. Another way I could do it is say, well, from the beginning of time, let's change colors, this makes a better story. From the beginning of my time working on the problem, I could see that the whole left side of the equation, once I did the split part here, was negative 1 times something else. So it's almost like saying negative 1x. 
Well, in order to get rid of times negative 1, I'm going to divide. So I'm going to sort of flip the order of what I would do here. Instead of distributing, I'm just going to divide the whole side by negative 1, which is totally fine. Negative 1, negative 1, eliminate these. The thing, this whole term here drops down, x minus 8. And then I'll do 7 divided by negative 1, which is, of course, negative 7. Add 8 to both sides x is equal to 1. See, it's the same thing. So I would say that my answer is 15 and 1. And my uh, setup will tell you to put them inside of curvy brackets, which is just fine. It's a way to show both solution sets. Curvy bracket looks a little bit like this, even though I don't know why I drew this curve so much. I just did. And I'll put you know 15 and 1 in here. Those are my solutions, or possible solutions, because we have to adjust for both. Not a big deal. Uh, the next one is negative 2, the absolute value of negative 2 plus 7x equals 68. So I'm going to make two equations again. Negative 2 plus 7x equals 68. So essentially, what I had before was originally in the problem. The other one is going to be the negative version. So negative, negative 2 plus 7x equals 68. And from here, you solve them the way that makes the most sense for you. So, I mean, this one's the furthest thing away from x would be 2 divide by 7 x is equal to 10 so there's one of the answers on the other side I'm actually going to go ahead and just do the divide by negative 1 situation because I think that makes more sense for me in this problem and it's because I want to really in fact, in many situations, the explanation to do it, and it's the one that I've given before, is that um, you could just set one up the way that you see it and then rewrite the same thing in the absolute value and set this equal to negative. But I did want to play into the idea of, okay, really it's the absolute value version and then the negative of it, because when you graph, it becomes more important that you know that. As you move forward in math into you know, calculus and pre-calculus and things like that, it's important to understand, like visually speaking, because you'll graph absolute values a lot more, that it really is the positive and negative. It sort of splits the graph into two parts. That kind of look there has that V shape to it. Now, regardless of that, let's keep plugging along here. This goes away, and negative 68 plus 2 is negative 66. And I have 7x, and I'll do negative 66 divided by 7. And end up with x is equal to negative 66 over 7. And when I do my curvy brackets here, I may want to put negative 66 over 7 and 10 just to make it look all prettified. You see, you seem, I'm, I'm sure you're sort of suspicious, like negative 66 over 7, nobody will give you that. Yep, there it is. That's how it works. Uh, I think the other thing that we have to talk about is the idea that um, unless you get to the absolute value part, you don't do the splitting into two problems. You have to, in order for you to split it, it has to be absolute. And with another piece added on to the equation on the same side, you don't have that yet. So in this problem, for instance, the absolute value of n over 9 plus 4 equals 5. Well, if I have this, which is why writing this sort of thing down is super important, by the way, I need to get the absolute value by itself first, so I'm going to do minus 4. It's almost like I treat the absolute value as its own variable. 1. Now that I have this, I can split it into two problems. The first being n over 9 is equal to 1. And then on the other side of it, negative n over 9 is equal to 1. So in the first case, I need to get rid of divide by 9, so I'm going to multiply by 9. This is a times. Um, so I get 9 as one of my answers. On the flip side, I'm going to actually be multiplying by negative 9. Because you can apply this negative to the top or to the bottom if you want, and it still works.
negative 9, n is equal to negative 9. So there's some thought, a little bit of food for thought about how to do that problem. And one more, almost done. I did want to be thorough because you'll hit all of these. Uh, this is the same thing just extended out. The original problem says negative 3 times the absolute value of 6n minus 2 plus 7 is equal to negative 41. Now the big deal about this type of problem is simply that you have to sort of treat the absolute value as its own variable. If you did this you would know that minus you'd subtract 7 first and then divide by negative 3. It's the same basic setup here and that's before you can even do the part that splits it into 2. It's a lot of work beforehand but it is what it is. So to get rid of minus 7 I need to subtract 7 and I did that because the 7 is the furthest thing away from the absolute value. Negative 48. Bring all this down. So from here, I need to get rid of this times negative 3, so I'm going to divide by negative 3. Those cancel out. And when I do negative 48 divided by negative 3, I'll get positive 16. And really, if you write things down and talk it out in your head before you do it, it makes it way easier. You make less mistakes that way. I'll always say all the parts, which is fine. It's okay to talk to yourself in math. Um, anyway, from here, I'm ready to do the split. So the first one is going to be 6n minus 2 is equal to 16 and the second one is going to be negative 6n minus 2 is equal to 16. So for the first one I'll just add 2 to this side to get rid of minus 2. 6n shows times I need to divide to get eliminate it and n is equal to 3. So that's one of my answers. On the other side, I'm actually going to distribute this time just to mix it up to show you it's the same. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6n. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. So I need to eliminate plus 2 by subtracting and get 14. 6n or negative 6n. I need to divide by negative 6 and I'll end up with n equals negative 7 thirds. So I'm going to say that my answer, up here in purple again, do my little curvy bracket, which I'm not the best at. I, I know. You don't have to send in any wise thoughts about how bad it is. Um, and then you end up with negative 7 thirds oh, and 3. So, see, that's it. Uh, absolute value, just make sure you set, once you get the absolute value by itself on the same side of the equation, that you have whatever is on the equal on the other side, what it's equal to, write that down twice. So I could have gone ahead and just written down 16 here, and then 16 here. And then I would have done one, where I do the positive version of 6n minus 2, and the other where I do negative, the entire term 6n minus 2. So just multiply it by negative 1. From here, you can either divide the whole thing by negative 1 and work it out, or you can distribute and solve it from there. I hope that this is a, a better explanation in terms of mathematical uh, purpose, and you'll find it useful as you move forward.